All right. Welcome everyone to the final afternoon of International Education Week. We appreciate you being here with us. This is a week, of course, that celebrates the benefits of international education, and it's an opportunity to share best practices and raise awareness. We're excited to do just that today um, to showcase some specific best practices um, of ours at AFS. Um, and in so doing, to also celebrate and raise awareness of some general best practices as we see it uh, in international education here at AFS. Um, it's also an opportunity for us, I think, to reintroduce AFS a bit to the world and to you, um, as uh, some of you may be familiar with us in a certain context, uh, but this is a great chance for us to tell you a bit about who we are and what we do today. Um, so my name is Ephraim Fisher. Um, I am the Chief Programs Officer at AFS Intercultural Programs. I'm based in New York City. Um, and I am joined today by two global colleagues of mine, um, Ceci Vasquez, who's the Executive Director of AFS in Guatemala, and Juan Medici, who is the Executive Director of AFS in Argentina, Uruguay, and Brazil. Um, before we get started presenting, we actually wanted to take an opportunity to get to know who you are as well. So we have a short poll um, asking you a little bit about where you're joining us from, um, what your role is, and then your interest as well in the topic. So I am going to launch that poll and give everyone a minute to let us know a bit more about yourselves. If you also want to share in the chat specifically where in the world you're joining us from, feel free as well. All right, we have responses from almost half, or actually just over half. We'll give you another 10 seconds, let's say. Great, so um, you can see, I think everyone can see the results. Uh, we have a good group from around uh, the world, Asia, Europe, Latin America, and the Caribbean, US and Canada, a mix also of uh, faculty, administrators, program providers, nonprofits, people who just love AFS, we always appreciate that. Um, and um, a mix, uh, it seems like, of those who have participated in uh, faculty-led programs who are very satisfied those who are looking to explore new opportunities potentially, and uh, those who have not as well, but are interested in the topic. Um, all right, so thank you guys so much. Um, again, as noted, um, we are gonna be uh, using this opportunity to also, uh, to some extent, introduce who AFS is today. Um, I'm sure that uh, many of you know AFS as one of the oldest and largest high school study abroad providers. And that is true, but actually our history stretches back much further than that. It started in 1914 um, as a amb uh, volunteer ambulance corps in World War I. And it wasn't until after World War II that those uh, same group of volu uh, uh, volunteer ambulance drivers uh, really wanted to continue that spirit of volunteerism. They wanted to continue the intercultural experiences that they were having firsthand um, in the spirit of keeping world peace. And that's when we um, began um, the AFS High School Study Abroad program, actually, in 1947. So we have been running this program now, uh, plus other programs, for over 75 years. Needless to say that in so doing, we have learned quite a bit and gained quite a bit of expertise. Um, and that includes that all of our programs are, are not just about travel, but about learning and reflection. Um, and we've developed considerable expertise in uh, global competence education over these years. Maybe that was not the term that was used always, but uh, that is a term that's certainly used today. Uh, some of you in the room may be familiar with AFS uh, in, through our um, global competence certificate, which we also engage quite a number of higher ed institutions with. 
Um, and so again, this is really at the core of everything we do um, and the combination of that experience that we've had and that expertise that we've developed um, has allowed us to really expand what we do and how we pursue our mission um, beyond just that high school study abroad that again, many people know AFS for. Um, we are also proudly not a commercial organization. We are a mission-based organization with clear impact goals uh, that we try to pursue through our programs. Um, we are truly global. We have offices in over 50 countries, but we're also local. And by that, I mean um, our staff, our volunteers, of course, our host families, uh, they are all nationals of the countries where we have those offices. And we are very proud also that this local um, and personal um, sort of characteristic is at the core of who we are and what we do. So today um, we are gonna be hearing from um, two of our leaders in Latin America uh, who will have a chance to introduce themselves more fully in a moment um, about they've applied that experience, the, that expertise, these values to offer really impactful faculty led programs. Um, and they'll tell you a bit more about sort of our capabilities in this area and our ambitions. And always again, with that emphasis on who we are as AFS, our mission, learning and reflection and uh, that local personal touch as well. So. Um, a few uh, housekeeping notes, I guess. Uh, make sure that uh, if you are sending anything in the chat that you click on uh, sending it to everyone and not just the panelists. Um, we also have a question and answer function. Please feel free to use both the chat and the question and answers throughout. We'll definitely leave time to, uh, to have Q&A at the end. Um, and if anyone needs closed captioning, you can activate that at the bottom of your screens. So without further ado, I am going to turn it over to my colleague, Ceci. Hi, hello. Uh, greetings from Guatemala. <clears throat> as, as Efren mentioned, I, I am based in Guatemala. I'm the partner director of AFS in Guatemala, but I'm also leading some projects in LA. But before I tell you uh, what projects, I'm gonna tell you what is LA. LA is basically the umbrella organization that groups uh, the AFS local organizations in 15 countries. We are 13 offices in 15 countries. And basically what we do is we promote cooperation amongst our offices to create projects that fulfill our mission, which is, as Ephraim already said, helping the um, creating or forming active global citizens. We also provide training opportunities for our different audiences but we also uh, support different entities that uh, implement or promote education of global citizens. Then, uh, next, Jeffrey, please. Then, of course, you know us by our high school mobility programs, most likely, right? We have been doing that since, um, yeah, Ephraim already said, and we do that in Latin America also. Um, in all 15 countries, we host, we send high school students for a year, for a semester, for a trimester, and we do that wonderfully well. So, but what probably you don't know is what's coming up in the next slide. That is, we also do mobility programs um, for young adults. We do mobility programs for uh, teachers. We have been doing since 2013 the uh, a teacher exchange program within Latin America, which is called Educadores con Causa. Uh, and we've done uh, exchanges with, we already have 250 alumni. Um, and it was obviously during pandemic, it was paused for a while. But we also do volunteer abroad programs. Uh, for example, we work with the German government with the Welferts program, and we host give or take around 200 or a little bit more than 200 participants every year in several countries in Latin America. We also do young professional exchange programs. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that one uh, later, uh, especially with Japan. Uh, we also do internship programs. Many of our offices have interns, but also in, in different fields. Uh, we've also done faculty-led programs we have done. And of course, we also participate in the youth assembly and we send delegations to the youth assembly. So what I'm trying to say here is that we do mobility programs for uh, young adults, both in the sending and in the hosting uh, side from Latin America. And I was telling you a little bit about the uh, young professional program. 
we're working right now with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan on the Juntos program. Juntos is a Japan government sponsored program, and it's a two way mobility program for young professionals in different areas. And basically, the idea of this program is to enhance the bilateral relationships between uh, the country of Japan and our different countries in Latin America. Um, we are hosting a group going uh, to Panama. Actually, the picture there is of a group of, of South Americans that went a couple of weeks ago at the beginning of November for their 10-day exchange program in Japan. Next week, we have another group from uh, South America traveling. And in February, we're going to have a group of uh, Japanese young, young professionals that are coming to Panama to learn more about the international marine transportation. And then we have another group going to Peru. So we do this and uh, you know, governments and institutions trust us to run these programs for them. But we're here today, probably next, for talking about the faculty-led programs, right? And let me, let me share with you an experience that we had just this year uh, with a group from the, well, actually two groups from the Dominican Republic to Guatemala and to Costa Rica. Our, our partner in the Dominican Republic is the Pedagogical University of the Dominican Republic. It is um, called Instituto Superior de Formación Docente Salome Ureña, or ISFODOSU is the acronym. This is a public university, right? It's a government sponsored university. And they run normally mobility programs. They, they do it and they did it without us uh, up to 2023. And uh, this happened in, uh, in, a, in a cooperation agreement with the government of the Dominican Republic and AFS in the Dominican Republic. And they invited the university to reimagine their traditionally mobility programs that they already had to include two new elements. Normally their mobility program was, they would go to a university, would be hosted by the university either at, um, uh, at um, uh, campus or, or whatever. And uh, what we invited them to think and to be open to the possibility of having a host family placement so that they could have a real cultural immersion or, or in a family. Uh, and they were, you know, open to it. The other element that we introduced them to is our global up educators or our global competence certificate that probably some of you already know about it, right? And this is a, a program, this is a, a, um, a learning program that all the students had to do. And there were some sessions, uh, reflecting sessions before, during and after this learning program is, uh, you know, 18 to 20 modules that they do on their time. But then there are some reflection sessions that we have together with trained facilitators, right? And uh, since this was a pilot program for the university, they were interested in hard data. And so they decided to do the IDI to evaluate the impact and the growth that their students were going to have in this um, new program right, with these two new elements, the host family and the global up educators. So let me tell you a little bit about the first group, right? The first group came to Guatemala, next. Uh, the first group came to Guatemala. There were 11 students and one faculty. Um, as I mentioned, this is the group that did the IDI. The IDI is the, for those of you who are not aware of it, of it is the Intercultural Development Inventory, and it actually measures uh, your intercultural skills, how much they grow or not. So we did one before, and then we did one after to see if there was growth or not in after doing our program, right? So uh, they also did our Global Up Educators. As I said, they did the first uh, facilita facilitated dialogue session. They did it uh, before they departed. We did it online with them while they were still in the, in the Dominican Republic. Then um, the, we did the second one when they just arrived in the first meeting that we had with them. And then we did number three and number four in the closing of the program. All these students and faculty members 
were hosted in host families, Guatemalan from uh, host families, and they were expected to attend these two weeks uh, to a school, right? These were students, I think I didn't mention that, these were students uh, becoming teachers, right? Uh, teachers in training, right? And so they had um, very uh, little hands-on experience, right? They were students, they're not teachers already, right? So they had, you know, the theory that university provides them and with some practice, but for two weeks, they were assigned to a school, they were uh, living in a host family, and in the school they were doing, well, depending on each school, but they were doing some shadowing, they did some teaching, they did some trainings with the teachers or the, the, the school uh, faculty. And um, what was important for the university is that they also had an academic element in this program. And so we did alliances in Guatemala with this uh, very prestigious university, uh, Universidad del Istmo, and uh, they did a, a, a session on inclusion in the classroom and, and learning different learning uh, situations that they have in the classroom and how to include them and, and work with them. And it was a, a very interesting um, session that they had. And of course, uh, AFS was in charge of doing the um, uh, orientation or the meeting before they went to the host families and the schools and after they had been there to, to, to have like a wrap up. Um, so next, I'd like to show you, well, you know, these are some of the pictures. If you see the first picture, it's a big hug between a host mother and, um, and, a, and a, a teacher or, or a student, sorry. Well, they, when they arrived in the camp, you, you see down there also, uh, you know, sharing meals with the families, you see them with their certificates there, and you see them in their cultural activities that were organized for them. So it was a nice mixture. The program, I believe, was a nice mixture between host family actually being in the school, actually doing cultural activities and academic activities. Next. And you don't have to believe me, you can see what the, the quotes that they were saying in our evaluation. Um, and they were able to, you know, see how what they're learning, how to actually uh, put it into a real life situation, right? Next. And when we did the IDI at the end, then they had 8.8, 8, uh, 18 uh, points growth. Everything and anything above seven points is considered a, a very good result, right? So it is, we were also very impressed on how well they and how much they advanced in developing their inter intercultural skills by doing this program in Two weeks. Actually, the mobility was two weeks, but we started some weeks before with the with the JCC training, right? So in less than a month, these eleven uh, students were able to increase. So the university was very happy and very pleased with these results, and that is why in the second semester of the year, the the program in Guatemala happened in April, and in August they decided to do it again, right? To do the program, but this time in Costa Rica. And um, so a similar program was assembled in Costa Rica, a two week program with a cultural program, academic component, also the host family, also school attendance, also volunteer driven organizations, also the GCC. And you can see next that um, they, even though, you know, the countries are different, uh, uh, they, they, there are also some very good results. And what they're saying here is that they really appreciate the support of the volunteers, right? Uh, they, so they really appreciate having, you know, an office to go, a staff that made all the difference there. This is an example agenda of the program that was put up. And you see it is somehow different, but at the same time, you know, it's got the same elements and it's, adapting to what the university was asking for. 
So they have, uh, during the first days, they were staying uh, near the office. They were not yet with their families and they did the academic components, the cultural components, the facilitated dialogue sessions that was all done during the first days. And then they went to the different <clears throat> local communities and to the different schools and to the different families. And then at the end, it was, um, there was uh, 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 an evaluation session where we got all these great quotes from them. And so next. And so basically what we're here to say is that we're open for business and we can do this. And Juan is going to tell you a little bit more about that. So Juan, it's up to you now. Thank you, Ceci. Thank you everyone. Thank you Efren for inviting us. And it's a pleasure for me to be here tonight, uh, today. Uh, I am Juan Medici, the partner director of AFS in Argentina, uh, Brazil and Uruguay. And as Ceci was saying, uh, we are looking for, and we are looking for new opportunities, new partnerships. Uh, we are trying to expand the scope of the, the, the programs that we that we run based on the experience that we have, based on the, the level of knowledge of our community. So I'm gonna share with you uh, an example of what we are doing right now with a, a university. We, desi we designed and customized our faculty-led program for, for Paradigm. We are already recruiting participants for next year for a two weeks um, exchange program for around between 10 to 20 participants. And basically the component uh, for this program is about lectures about gender, about race, which is a very important topic uh, in Brazil. Obviously, uh, in terms of our, our identity and experience, uh, we are gonna run intercultural workshops, focusing on a uh, difference between um, the communication styles between uh, the US and Brazil in order to improve the communications between the two cultures. Workshops with NGOs and local universities focusing basically on, on the sustainable development goals, for instance, and whatever the, the, faculties, the faculties are in need, we are open and flexible enough to ad adapt the components and the content of the program. And in addition, obviously, cultural activities like uh, learning how to uh, cook uh, the Brazilian food, particularly the Northeast, Northeast food, samba classes and so forth, and sightseeing basically, um, visiting the Paqueta Island, which is a very nice and interesting island in the Guanabara Bay, the Tijuca Forest, uh, the Sugarloaf Mountain, and so forth. Ma many uh, other tourist attractions that um, the, the beautiful city of Rio offers. But that's one example, and as I said, if uh, your university is interested in um, considering developing a program, count with us because we are really looking forward and uh, eager to develop a program and, and impact more people uh, in the future. Next. So what is different with us? How, how are we different from other providers? Um, and basically I would say the volunteer-based organization, um, our volunteers provide a diff different kind of support. I would, I would say that the kind of empathy uh, the kind of relationship that they want to develop with the participants is completely different from any other organization. We have a very experienced staff on the ground, uh, which are also experts on logistics. We are used to uh, manage more than 400 uh, foreign students every year, in, for instance, in Brazil, in Argentina, and Uruguay as well. We are flexible in offering accommodation according to the needs and preferences of our partner. Um, we excel on learning and reflection. I think this is a, a, a something really important for us and then to measure also uh, what is the impact of these kind of experiences. And we provide, uh, as I said, as mentioned, Ceci mentioned the IDI, for instance, to measure the impact. And we have a network of uh, organizations to partner with in, in each of our countries from governments, schools, uh, other universities, NGOs that are deployed in the field. Next, uh, please. Uh, so this is a, um, a, a quote from um, one of our participants. Being a host family, because our host families are participants as well, was the best way to face this new experience. So there's the support of the organization. Uh, they were able to experience the differences in languages, uh, food, traditions, and culture. So in a way, we accompany the, the, the experience of uh, from for the host families, for the participants, and so forth, so that they can have a... a, a an experience that will last forever. Thank you. Next, my friend. Uh, areas where we can offer programs as well. Well, hands-on experience in education, engineering, social health, business. Well, 
Ceci has already mentioned some of the new kind of programs, but also other type of programs like lang language learning, cultural understanding, which we are really um, experts on that, volunteering Im impact as well in a, an academic dimension are some of the types or some of the topics where we can actually help you develop a program. Next, please. So in terms of next, uh, next steps, uh, you have a, a, a code there, or a barcode, where you can actually learn more about the intercultural experience. You can learn more about LA. Uh, we are really interested in developing this new partnership with you. We, will, we look forward. Our volunteers are really open uh, to develop the, these problems, and, and as well as uh, our staff as well. Great, thank you. So um, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, you can see our faces a little bit bigger that way. Um, and we do have an opportunity to uh, plenty of time to to address any questions or hear comments from those of you who are here. So um, there's a few ways to do that. Yeah, you can put that uh, question uh, in the chat or in the Q&A function, or if you want to sort of raise your virtual hand, we can unmute you and give you an opportunity also to uh, share comments and ask questions as well. Well, we must have been extremely comprehensive and um, to the point. Um, again, does does anyone have questions they want to ask or comments they want to share? Perhaps it's it's just uh, interesting to say that. Uh, we can do custom programs, right? Uh, they don't have to be in a host family. Our experience with this university is, in some cases has been that they want host families, but if, if, if they don't want, it's okay, right? We don't, we're not um, uh, bound to have only host family experiences, right? Do you think there's something in the chat in the... Yes, oh, no. so, William, I guess you're saying hello. Um... Did you have something you wanted to share? Someone raised her hand, I think. Anthony Martin, if we can unmute him. Yep, he is. Should Hello. Be... Oh, yes. so you can hear me? Thank you. Yes. Uh, so I was typing, but then I can just say that out loud. Uh, thank you for giving me this space. I was asking uh, the the speakers if what was for them the what were for them the most challenging aspects of organizing a, a program, an exchange program for a university this time. What when coming from the experience of the uh, pupil adolescent exchange that we are used to as AFSers. Um, I can answer that since I was involved in, in organizing the program in Guatemala, for, for example. One of the fears I had, it was, um, you know, we have good relationships with schools because that's what we do every time, right? And I was like, okay, what am I going to do now with universities? It's, it's, it's an, um, an audience that we normally, you know, don't work with, right? At least in Guatemala. Uh, but my experience, I was very happily surprised to see that um, uh, I knocked on five doors probably, and I've got, and I then I had two universities to choose from. They were both very interested in doing this program. So my learning was, you know what, uh, universities are just as interested as, as school in doing mobility programs. So um, that I, what I thought was a challenge, really, I was proved wrong. Um, and then another fear that our support staff had was, uh, you know, if there were going to be any support cases or any adjusting issues or any um, or any situations and, and, you know, working with adults is not the same thing 
in terms of, 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 of working with, with teenagers, that they are somehow more, control, more controlled. But um, again, happily surprised that um, we didn't have any, any issue at all. Um, I guess the key thing would be that the, um, as in any program, in any mobility program, that the participants are well selected by the university and by the school. Yeah. So I, I cannot think of any other challenge. We are used to doing mobility programs and this is just another audience and it's just as impactful as as any high school program. And it's just as fulfilling in our mission of AFS of helping to create uh, global citizenship as any other AFS program. And we have the elements and we have the, the anything that we need. So, yeah. Can I add something? Basically in, in, in our case, uh, I would say that, um, um, I wouldn't say concern, but the challenge is to have a clear understanding about the needs and the expectations from the university and see whether we, we are able to really uh, fit that demand, basically, because we uh, the reputation for us is really important. So sometimes it's better to say no if you are not able to do something. But I, I do believe also that the kind of, usually the demands from, in the traditional programs, I'm gonna say about it, the emotional demands that we, used to, we are used to have from parents, for instance, and when you compare, it's way much more uh, simple uh, to work with universities in, in that regard, as long as we have a clear understanding and alignment about the needs and expectations about the, the content of the program. Thank you, William. We also have a question, it looks like, from Anthony. So, Anthony, I think you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, and please feel free to ask your question or share your comment. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Anthony Martin. I work with the University for Peace based in Costa Rica. Uh, first off, congratulate you all for the work that you're doing and for these programs. Uh, my question is, given that you've already ran a program here in Costa Rica, is there still a possibility to you know, run a future one in Costa Rica? And if so, can we be a part of that? Uh, and if so, who should I reach out to? Thank you, Anthony. Um, we, actually, we have collaborated with the University for P of Peace in Costa Rica before. If I'm not mistaken, we had one of your professors at one of our ALE meetings uh, or our ALE um, CIEG, or I'm not sure if it was a Global Wednesday or our Semana Iberoamericana de Educación Global that we did a couple of years ago. Um, uh, so I guess we somehow already have some connections there. Um, we're open for business, as we mentioned. Yes, uh, if there's any university interested in doing any mobility program, be it to Costa Rica or from Costa Rica, we're more than open to do it. Um, I, I would hope that the university that we're working with in, in the Dominican Republic for next year, they put us in the budget and they, they run these programs again. Um, I'm believing uh, that what they actually look for is, and I'm not so familiar with the University for, of uh, the, the, the Peace University in Costa Rica, if they have any teacher training programs, but um, because that was, that's specifically what they were looking for at that point. But uh, yeah, probably we could uh, work and contact uh, uh, Floria Arias, who's the national director, or you can go through us and, and we could make that, establish that connection. Yeah, right, okay. because Anthony, I understand your university is based in Costa Rica, right? It's, uh, it's um, Yes, that's correct. Yeah, and and you're the ones of the do that Earth Charter, right? Or no, am I wrong? Yes, the Earth Charter, as well as the Center for Executive Education, which is specifically what I represent, are kind of separate branches of UPs, but definitely super helpful. Um, Floria Arias, you said, is the local representative, correct? Perfect. Correct. Right. Thank and, you very much. And, uh, we worked with Earth, Earth Charter, so that's, uh, you know, that's how I knew the, your university. Yeah. 
Yeah, thank you, right. Anthony. And of course, AFS, you know, we do, we love to to uh, work with others and partner with others and to explore creatively how we can do that. Likewise, I know my colleague uh, or my colleagues uh, who work with our, our Global Competence Certificate and Global Up programs are <clears throat> with us today. And that's another way that we engage universities um, and professors and uh, university students. So uh, we'll be happy to be in touch and to explore what uh, what kind of collaborations we could do together as well. Thank you. All right, other questions, comments, thoughts from those of you who are with us? Well, at least here in New York, it is Friday afternoon, Thank and it's. You. I think oh, William raised his hand. Oh, William. William raised. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me again, and uh, I'm following the wave of this curiosity as we I am connected from Iceland and uh, from AFS office in this case. And here in Europe, there is this tradition of mobility, which is uh, autonomously organized by the Euro European Union, which is this Erasmus projects. So it's very different. But I found very curious that you had this possibility to develop programs in within a specific training, which is the teacher training, and which is something we as AFSers work a lot about, so education. And so I was eventually wondering if there will be possibilities in the future that we you there will be a way to extend this program also out of the area of the uh, southern and central american countries to for example other partnership with the european countries for example or if it's still a, a long procedure to go that way <laughs> thank you i said do you want to start or do you want me to chime in you go chime in. Yeah, I think um, one of the great benefits of AFS is our global reach. Um, and um, I think, you know, what we were trying to make clear in the beginning is that, you know, uh, as a global organization, we have a certain set of expertise that can be applied in a variety of ways to pursue our mission, but also to serve the needs of uh, international education and international mobility. So, um, we are uh, very much open for business globally for, for those who are looking for opportunities. Um, I know I have colleagues also here, for example, from Greece, in addition to Iceland, on this call. Um, and um, perhaps, uh, of course, there are going to be uh, faculty programs that are quite interested in going to destinations like this to study geology, to study history, to study archaeology, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I think, of course, this is something that we're very well set up to do, and we're very eager to serve folks around the world because we know that we can and we know we have the capability. So while we're focusing and highlighting what we've already done in Latin America with the exchanges that we've shown between the Dominican Republic and Guatemala and Costa Rica, what's being planned between the United States uh, and Brazil, um, absolutely we can uh, uh, offer this um, uh, elsewhere in the world. So I, I hope that addressed your question, William, if that's what uh, you were had in mind. Clarissa? Hello, my name is Clarissa. I am from Honduras and I work for the National Autonomous University of Honduras. I am also a former exchange IFS student from Honduras to Germany. <laughs> so I'm very pleased to know about these programs because I have been well involved in AFS, uh, well, in as a teenager, but now uh, I work also for internationalization of higher education and we have uh, mobility programs. So because we are so close in Honduras, I would like to answer if we had this program in Honduras because uh, many years ago, we were very interested in our university to, to make an alliance with AFS because 
uh, as you know, we as our higher education institutions and we got mobility programs, but we need support from other organizations uh, before or uh, students or, or teachers do a mobility program. Uh, there it could be an Erasmus program or others. So uh, as, I, as a former uh, exchange student, I knew about the intercultural pro, uh, 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 workshops that you had as AFS and all this knowledge they have developed. But I don't know if that will be also like a a service, can, can I call that that? Like you mentioned that open for business because uh, as universities, we are looking for this kind of support uh, because we, we do not have all these uh, uh, knowledge that or this practice that you have like an organization and as I know, as a participant for. So uh, my question would be, it's going too long, but uh, is if you had this kind of other services for university that support or mobility programs, like in and out and uh, exchange, like, like we have with other partners. And also if you will, expand this program with uh, uh, this LA program that you present in Honduras because we'll be really interested in participating. Thank you. Hi, Clarissa. Um, or right now, um, I mean, AFS, I, I would say go and contact your local AFS organization. They could offer um, you know, internship programs for your students or faculty, even faculty led programs abroad for your students. That is a possibility. Um, you can also join, you know, in the, you can also write to us in the, in the, you know, the, the email that we shared before. Uh, and we could, you know, take it from there. Uh, info .a, info .la at afs.org. We could also help you. Um, I'm not sure if the office in Honduras currently has these programs in their in their portfolio, uh, but we can help you either have them with them or directly with LA. It could also be an option. I don't know if this answers your question, Clarissa. But Clarissa, do we do we answer your question? And does that, that address what you were asking? Yes, thank you. And also about these uh, support programs for uh, I don't know workshops for intercultural experiences that will be uh, yeah a interest for us like to to work with AFS. Yes, uh, LA offers, and if you if you vis visit the LA page, we offer, um, well, we just finished yesterday the, the week, the education week, but we also offer the Global Up for Educators, and we have universities that, for example, this one in the Dominican Republic, their faculty took the Global the global Up Educators, so the Global Competence Certificate, or part of the faculty took it, and, and uh, that's where it all started. So, you're more than welcome to check out our webpage where it says Diplomado, and then you can, um, you know, start going from there, and we can start building our relationship there with your university. More than happy to it. Yep. Yeah, Thank Clarissa, you very we'll much. Be very happy to be in touch and to explore how we can collaborate. And, and again, of course, we do have an AFS office in Honduras, and so that's already a great start um, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, seeing how we can collaborate and how we can offer you things that further your needs as well as ours. So thank you. All right. Great, thank final you. Final chance, go ahead. Uh, final chance if folks have questions or comments that they wanna share. Well, I uh, do want to uh, take a moment before we officially close to make also a plug for the AFS Youth Assembly, um, which will be in New York City in August. This is uh, 
a really incredible gathering of young change makers, um, ages 18 to 32, who come together um, and um, address very critical global issues um, and uh, get a chance to not only be uh, at the UN, but to uh, be together to meet colleagues and others uh, like them from around the world. It's a really exciting opportunity for those of you who are either uh, eligible yourselves or if you want to offer it um, as a university to your students. Uh, we certainly had cohorts come from uh, universities and um, it's been really exciting and a really great event. Um, you should know that um, you can fill out a survey now using this QR quote, code or the link that you see on the screen. Uh, just to give us some feedback on this session. Um, likewise, when this uh, uh, Zoom closes, you'll also be sent a link as well. So if you don't have a chance um, to capture the QR code or prefer to do it uh, when you are finished here, uh, of course, we always appreciate uh, learning um, and uh, improving and hearing your feedback and, and getting your insights. Um, and finally, um, just to thank you all for being a part of this uh, session, for being a part of this week to recognize your support and your advocacy for international education. You all actually will be receiving a badge um, that uh, signifies uh, your uh, both your participation and your support for international education. So again, we're really, really pleased that you could come and be with us today, especially on a Friday afternoon, especially around the world, especially some of you who it's actually probably Friday night uh, and maybe even quite late. Um, it was a real honor to get a chance to tell you a little bit about uh, what AFS is today, what's important to us, what we're doing uh, to highlight some of our best practices and to hopefully uh, take from here the conversation forward with you and to see how we can also collaborate with you. So thank you everyone who joined us today. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Let's keep in touch.